the PC for today is in response to Grakan Secretary General Liang Tek Ming's baseless uh, accusations and also criticisms against the Penang State Government in regards to Penang's per capita GDP growth uh, since 2007. Where Liang Tek Ming said that since 2007, Penang's uh, GDP per capita has been growing at the slowest rate percentage-wise uh, among all the states in Peninsular Malaysia. I just want to make three points in response to what he said. Firstly, he used outdated Department of Statistics figures for his calculation. And you can see in the press statement that I have uh, I've given out, if we use the updated Department of Statistics figures, I did the recalculation, you would find that Penang is not at the bottom. At the bottom, right at the bottom, is actually Sabah. If you calculate the growth rate for Sabah GD, uh, GDP per capita, the growth rate for Sabah is actually the lowest. Uh, sorry, uh, Trunganu is actually the lowest, 36.2%, followed by Sabah at 40%, and not Penang. And I also wonder, why did Liang Tek Ming use 2007 as a starting point? Because we all know the Penang State Government changed in 2008. So when I went back and did the calculation using 2008 as the starting point, we find that Sabah is at the bottom of the ranking, whereby the GDP per capita only grew 13%, followed by Sarawak 19%, Trunganu 26%. Penang's growth in comparison was 33%. So he should use updated statistics. Second point I want to make is that Liang Tek Ming should acknowledge the fact that Penang was very much hit by the 2008 global economic crisis. If you look at the figures I, should, uh, I put in the press statement, Penang's GDP contracted by 10.5% in 2009 as a result of the global economic crisis, compared to only 1.5% for the entire country. So the Penang state government had a huge disadvantage in terms of GDP per capita and the, the reduction in the GDP per capita was because of global factors that had nothing to do with the Penang State Government. What the Penang State Government did, I think, was to work hard to restore the economic growth in Penang. And if, let's say, we look at GDP per capita growth starting from 2010 to 2015, we'll see a very different picture. Penang ranking was actually much better than what uh, Liang Tan Ming says it was. From 2010 to 2015, Penang's GDP per capita actually grew 33%, which would put Penang 6th for all states. In comparison, if you look at the same figures, Sabah is at the bottom at 11%. So why do I want to compare Penang to Sabah? Liang Tek Ming in his uh, press statement last week, or press conference last week, he asked Chief Minister Lim Guan Ning to seek economic lessons from Abdul Rahman Dalan, the minister in charge of the EPU. But how can he ask the Penang State, uh, the Penang Chief Minister, to ask advice, economics advice from the minister from EPU, where who is from Sabah, when the when the GDP per capita figures for Sabah is so low and so uh, unsatisfactory? I would like. Uh, the Grakan Secretary General to look at these figures properly and I will ask him to go and take a basic economics 101 lesson before he comes and lecture the Penang State Government on economic growth because he himself doesn't understand figures, he himself doesn't understand economics and I'm very sad to see that Grakan which used to pride itself as a party of intelligentsia is using bad statistics and poor economics in order to criticize the Penang State Government. I think uh, just to add on to uh, Ken Ming's points, I think the assertions made by Liang Tek Ming are not only, well obviously we have already shown that uh, it is fallacious as far as uh, statistics are concerned, but it's also illogical. Uh, I think and anyone from Penang can tell you that. But if, but if you want to look at another indicator, is we look at the balance of trade, which is basically the difference between export and import. And Penang, since 2008, contributes 20 to 40 percent of Malaysia's uh, trade surplus every year. And uh, for the year 2015, it was 34 percent. In other words, out of 
the entire Malaysia's trade surplus, one third is from Penang. Obviously, there's not an economy in contraction. There's not an economy that's not growing well. Uh, we've been able to keep it up uh, uh, simply because, obviously, uh, this reflects the confidence and, uh, and, and, and uh, well, well-being of our economy. The other point, which our chief minister has also many times mentioned, is the amount of investment that we have gotten in Penang since 2008. Uh, in fact, from two, 20, 2008 to uh, 2015, it's about 55 billion ringgit. Compared to the same duration from 2000 to 2007, which is during BN's time, it was only 29 billion ringgit. So almost two times the amount of investment. This reflects obvious investor confidence in Penang. Uh, and obviously, if Penang was not an economy growing and not doing well, we wouldn't have been able to uh, get so much investment. Um, I, I will have three points to add to what Saudara Kian Ming and Saudara Zari have said. First point is, of course, uh, we were intrigued why YB Liang would use an outdated data from the, from the Department of Statistics to prove his point. Either uh, they have not done their research or it was out of a malicious attempt to paint a bad, bad picture of the Penang State Government. But that also brings us to the second point, which is uh, why the Department of Statistics uh, modified their data after so many years. The data that was used by Liang was uh, taken from a 2011 publication by the Department of Statistics. But the latest data by the Department of Statistics in 2014 showed a different number. Of course, we understand if the number uh, changes for the past, for the immediate one or two years, past one or two years. But this is a seven year modification. And last year in my budget speech, I have uh, uh, urged the government to actually review the Statistic Act which governs uh, how statistics is done in our country. Because the Act, uh, the last amendment was in 1989 which is already 20 odd years uh, outdated. That's number one. But no, that, that's the second point. But the third point is, I think a greater issue that we have in hand here is uh, not just growth in terms of uh, economic growth whether by state or by the country, but also the distribution of uh, economic prosperity. Uh, if we look at income, if we look at uh, median income, which is uh, basically an indicator of how much the, the people in each state, how much workers, employers in each state, sorry, uh, medium wage, how much employers in each state are earning, Penang is ranked number four, uh, minus the, the federal territories. Penang is ranked number four states out of uh, all the states in Malaysia have a medium wage of below the national number and that includes Sabah which has the lowest medium wage uh, in the whole country at 1,100 ringgit a month. So this is a problem not just of uh, economic growth but also a, a, a bigger problem of economic distribution. We must understand that one of the factors for GDP growth one of the factors for economic growth, especially GDP growth, is government spending, government investment. Uh, it is very clear that the federal government spending is not distributed equally among all the states. Therefore, you have states like Sabah, uh, who is earning, who, where 50% of the workers are only earning below uh, 1,100 ringgit. And you have states, you have places like Putrajaya, Kuala Lumpur, where the earnings is above two or 3,000 ringgit a month. So th this is a very, uh, th this is a huge disparity, which I think the government should address. Thank you. You, can we find a moment,